2017 has been an intense year for the video games industry. We have had our fair share of awesome games released this year, but we've also seen some controversy surrounding some of the biggest titles. And while it's easy to look at the year in headlines, it's sometimes better to look at the year in numbers. Gamesindustry.biz has published a fantastic infographic on what this year meant for video games all in numbers. In its own words, the site has, quote, reached out to more analysts, browsed through more financials and crunched more figures in an effort to paint some kind of picture as to what 2017 meant for the games industry. And some of the figures really are eye-opening. For example, a whopping 43% of the industry's entire market value belongs to mobile games, by far the biggest single portion of the industry. Console games make up 29% of the market value, while PC games make up 28%. I don't know if this is entirely surprising, though. I mean, 43% of the market is mobile games. Would you even consider them gamers, Mike? Are they even games? Well, I mean, they own 43% of the industry so I guess we have to <laughs> we have to consider them because they technically are games but how much gameplay is in those games is another question was that scathing enough did we rip apart the mobile industry 43% of our I don't industry think we ripped it apart but we definitely kind of just casually batted dismissed it, away, it. <laughs> Meanwhile, EA was the biggest publisher, at least in the UK this year, responsible for over 16% of all boxed game sales. Activision came close in second with 15%, while Nintendo, Ubisoft and Sony fell some way short of them. And it's been a lot of talk this year about physical versus digital sales, and whether physical sales are still a reliable way to gauge a game's success. Well, according to Games Industry's research, physical sales only made up roughly a third of all console game sales in 2017. As for PC, maybe unsurprisingly, almost exactly 90% of all sales were digital. That really is not surprising at all, the uh, PC digital sales, because uh, the, remain the remaining 10% have got to be the remaining 10% of the gaming population that doesn't have access to fast enough internet speeds, because I can literally think of no reason uh, outside of maybe collector's editions, but even then, you still get like a download code or, some or something most of the time anyway, so there's very little reason to get box games anymore, and you can really see in PC gaming in particular, Particular, the digital just that's what PC gaming is now and and the buying a boxed game getting a collector's edition or going down to the shop to get a, a disc in a box is a very very small portion of that market that's just kind of the way it's going so whenever we're quoting figures to do with how many physical sales of a game have been bought then we can know we can kind of assume here by these rough figures that we add yeah. an extra 200% to that to make up the digital sales. So that's interesting for us at least. Looking at the total overall game sales from every platform in the UK, PS4 does win by a landslide. Sony's console was single-handedly responsible for more than 50% of all video game sales this year. Think about that. That means one in every two games sold in the UK this year were on the PS4. Xbox One made up 31% while Nintendo Switch only saw 7.5, but that still is a very new console. And as for new IPs, Nintendo put out the most at 43%, while Sony were close behind at 41%. Ubisoft put out the remaining 27%, while shockingly, Microsoft, Activision and EA didn't put out any new IP. This means that Ubisoft has put out 27% of all the IPs that GamesIndustry.biz looked at from the major publishers, I assume, and Microsoft didn't put out any. And they own a, they've got a console. Uh, <laughs> that is the shocking, isn't that it? That is a, quite a shocking statistic. Probably no surprise that EA and Activision haven't put out new IPs because they've just got massive IPs anyway, and they're just, you know, it's their business model. So that's no surprise. It is interesting when you, when you look at the broad kind of structure of it, Ubisoft is actually trying to put new stuff out there that's you know that's worth remembering and when you think about microsoft the only new ip that they've got um to my knowledge next year is sea of thieves i mean everything else state of decay 2 and crackdown mm -hmm. 3 they're both sequels or like the ne next iteration in a yep. in a se sequence so i mean what i mean they need more games i mean we sent it for ages but this is this is the hard facts now no ips in the whole 2017 try harder the most covered game across the whole of the internet was Overwatch, with over 56,000 articles written about it in 2017. Destiny 2 was second, while surprisingly, PUBG didn't even factor in the top 10. And as for the most viewed video game trailers on YouTube, well, it's probably not what you think. It was the fantastic Clash of Clans Hog Rider 360 trailer that was the most viewed at over 58 million views, while way, way behind in second place was Super Mario Odyssey's E3 trailer with 20 
23.1 million views. And what about review scores? Well, according to Games Industry, the two highest rated games of the year were both Nintendo games, Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey, both bagged a 97 score on Metacritic. The lowest rated was something called Room in the Night Sky by Poisoft, which has a Metacritic score of 17. Super Hot VR was the best selling PC VR game, while Skyrim VR was the best selling on consoles. The data also revealed some cool facts as well, like the almost $33 million pledged to crowdfunding behemoth Star Citizen this year alone, as well as the 245,000 viewers, which broke the record for most concurrent Twitch stream viewers for an individual channel for Lee Faker Sang Hyuk back in February. And it also reminded us of the $500 billion valuation of Chinese tech firm Tencent. I'm telling you, Tencent are coming. They're they're buying up all, all the shit. They're freaking yeah, yeah, man. I mean, that is a, that five hundred billion dollars. That is a big ass company. Um, and they, like you've said before on the channel as well, they kind of have got a good eye for seeing what is kind of growing jumping on that and either just having that or making their own version of it and, and succeeding that way. And they've kind of really cornered the, the market in a big way in China and they've made loads and loads of money in, over the last uh, few years. They're an enormous company. I also find it interesting that Star Citizen is, is still kind of, is, is gathering the momentum almost, it seems like, to get $33 million in one year. I mean, what's the figure up to now? It's like 200 million or something, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a huge number. And they're still getting loads of backing because it's a very promising looking game. It's a very exciting to watch the demos and stuff like that. So. They just released their a new trailer with Mark Hamill yeah. doing some voice acting, yeah. in, which looks awesome, by the way. It's the single player campaign, which is the Squadron 42 element of the game, obviously. Um, but that is the thing that is most attractive me to the game. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it does look awesome, I, yeah. I will say, but um, you just hurry up. So this really is a, is a good piece of work from GamesIndustry.biz. Uh, the link will be in the description if you want to check it out. It's basically just a, a whole article that just reveals all kinds of different facts about the games industry in 2017. And the, the first time they did this was last year, so you can have a look at last year as well and, and have a good comparison there. It's really good work. There's really, some really interesting stuff there. The games industry is massive. That's the main takeaway, though. Another thing that is massive is the amount of comments you leave on our videos. So let's take a look at a few of those. First up, commenting on our we're yet to see loot boxes crossing the line into gambling video. Funcanic says, Cashable Outable should be a t-shirt. I agree, Funcanic, and I also should get all of the money from the t-shirt sales. Maybe you should have like four hours sleep more often. You'll come out with all these t-shirts. Yeah, and... I'll start making some, uh, some serious dough as a, as a t-shirt. See, I was trying to come up with a slogan there, but I had eight hours last night, so it's not happening. <laughs> Next up on the same video, Patrick Owen comments, Hey, dick jokes, proper high bro, that. I can't remember what. It was the Conan Exiles thing, the dong slider. That wasn't a joke. That no, was no, it was, it, was, it was me saying, oh, I feel sorry for you. And then I, did, and I said I didn't know what I was saying. And I was, oh, right, yeah. And then we were laughing, we were chortling and all that nonsense. It was, uh, it was good times. <laughs> Those were the days. <laughs> and commenting on some kind of roundup video that we did recently, Salty Soap says, I love this channel and everything about it. But I just noticed you both look a little gnome-like, but don't worry, I will still watch you. Maybe it's just because you can't see our legs because of the way the camera is. Maybe that. I don't know what. I don't know what falls into the depth. What, what is <laughs> maybe, the Maybe it's because we, we sit here pretending that we're fishing. Yeah, in it? our pointy red hats yeah. that we're well known for wearing. Thanks for still watching anyway, though. What a top guy. <laughs> Next up on one of our many, many, many loot box videos, Lavania Shri comments, Gareth, you look like Luke Mitchell. Ha <laughs> ha. That isn't very nice. Luke Mitchell, he's just... I've got no idea who that is. EastEnders, man, isn't it? Oh. I probably shouldn't have asked them, should I? Who do I look like? Like, down below. Okay, I said, anyone... Anyone yeah, have any insults to throw at me? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. I guess. I insult enough people, I guess. I should expect yeah. it in return. And also commenting on a news roundup from earlier in the week, Hussein A says, you know, you both are ethereal. Ethereal knob gobblers. I just, what is, well, I need to know what ethereal is before I it respond It's like they're not quite, not quite real. It's like. We're, yeah. So we're not quite really knob gobblers. Yeah. So we're not. Not quite in reality, it's this kind of thing. So we're right? kind of knob gobblers. I, I mean, I just, I just thought it was a nice turn of phrase, Ghostly. like ethereal knob gobblers. I was really impressed by that, and I mean, I, I know he's insulting us, but all the same, fair dues. Like it's a good. Yeah, I, I just think you should kind of figure out what the insult is. <laughs> it's not an insult. Like, <laughs> because it kind of sounds like it he's, might be funny. He's gone with the sounds rather than the actual. Yeah, he's gone for the, for the alliteration. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was impressed. Knob gobblers. <laughs> Ethereal knob gobblers. Well, cheers. Thanks for I mean, for a 14 year old, that's a pretty good insult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good job, you're saying. 
keep watching, dude. What was your standout statistic from the games industry this year? Let us know down in the comments below. Like the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here. There's another video to watch on your screen there. Support us on Patreon if you are awesome. We will see you again in the next one. Bye for now.